Well, this question comes from Jared. How much influence does the media ultimately have on the presidential election? Well, in certain respects, a lot of influence, because certainly it's the media that brings the message of the candidates to the voters through a variety of ways, reporters in the newspapers, television, of course, and now we also have social media that influences this as well. And if the media isn't paying attention to a candidate, as is often sometimes the complaint for the Paul campaign, it means that they maybe they aren't able to get their message out in the same way. Of course, candidates can bypass the media or with, again, the advent of various social media uh, possibilities can work around the established or what's called the mainstream media and get their message out to the voters in other ways. But to a certain extent, it does have an influence in a variety of ways, and it's something that most campaigns are well aware of. And this question comes from Sean. Good to see you, Professor Hagel, one of my former students. I'm curious if the GOP has a candidate to beat Obama in the end. Do you foresee a close race for the GOP? Well, that's the big question right now as we're just past the Iowa caucuses and coming into the New Hampshire primary. Mitt Romney certainly has the inside track, so to speak, in terms of the nomination. He did well here in Iowa. He can consider it a win. He managed to beat expectations. Uh, he's expected to win New Hampshire. That should give him some momentum coming into South Carolina. But we still have to see if he can actually win South Carolina or if the more conservative candidates are able to coalesce around someone else who actually wins. It could be a long, drawn-out battle, and it's certainly something that the Romney campaign is well prepared for. And what has to happen for him to be beat at this point is for some other candidate to emerge that is able to uh, demonstrate both the organizational strength and fundraising ability that Romney has so far. Again, it seems like Romney has the inside track, but it's certainly not a done deal, and the process could last for several months months. Our next question comes from Nicholas. How does the delegate process work at the state level? Well, in Iowa, Republicans and Democrats do things a little bit differently as far as the delegation delegate process is concerned. For the Republicans, the process begins at the precinct level where delegates are selected in the precincts to go to the county convention. At the county convention, delegates are then selected to go to the Congressional District Convention, and in the Congressional District Convention, delegates are selected to go to the state convention, and at the state convention, delegates are selected to go to the national convention. And at all of these steps, the delegates are officially unbound, though of course they can support particular candidates. Because we usually know who the nominee for our party, uh, whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans, is by June, there's no need for the candidates to particularly be bound and they can support whoever the nominee is or someone else if they wish at that particular point. But because the other states do bind their candidates, at least for the first vote, uh, again, it's usually a matter of, of following who has the nomination or who has enough delegates for the nomination at that point. But if it turns out this time that the race goes on much longer, the fact that Iowa's delegates to the national convention are unbound could be very critical and that's certainly something that will be an issue at the state convention as those national delegates are being selected. The next question comes from Matt, who asks, why does Iowa use the caucus instead of the primary, like New Hampshire, for primary elections? Why not just have all 50 states vote on the same day? Well, the first part of that, each state has a choice of doing either a caucus or a primary. And for whatever reason, back uh, many years ago, Iowa decided to use a caucus system. Uh, for the most part, the states that adopted the caucus system long ago, it was more a matter to give the power to the people rather than having it in the hands of party officials, big wigs, the concern over that back room, cigar filled room sort of thing where they're deciding who gets to be the nominee for any particular party. So again, this was intended as a way to give the people more of an opportunity to decide and to participate in the process. In terms of the question of why not have all 50 states vote on the same day, uh, it would be, some people have suggested something along those lines. The problem is, is that very few candidates would be able to mount a national primary campaign. And the thing about having many states, a few states go first and then build up to a Super Tuesday type of situation where you then have several, is that it gives candidates an opportunity to build an organization. That very few candidates, as I said, would be ready immediately to go into a 50 state state campaign mode. And so by starting in smaller states like Iowa and then New Hampshire immediately following and building up to bigger states like South Carolina and Florida, it gives them an opportunity to try out their message, to talk to voters, to see what's on the minds of the voters, to build that organization and see if they can in fact take it to other states and ultimately take it to multiple states at the same time and again by the time the person gets to be a nominee to take it to all 50 states. 
The next question comes from Becky, who asks, I'd like to know how often the winner of the Iowa caucus has gone on to become the nominee of their party, and when did the Iowa become the first in the nation caucus state? Well, as far as the first part of that, uh, the Democrats have a little bit better record of choosing the having the caucus winner become the nominee. In terms of contested caucuses, they've done so six out of the last eight times, and that includes in 1980 when, although President Carter was the incumbent, usually it's not a contested caucus, he was challenged fairly significantly by Ted Kennedy at that time, and so I'll count that as a contested caucus as well. For the Republicans, it looks like about three out of the last six contested caucuses has the winner of the Iowa caucus gone on to get his party's nomination. As far as the second question, when did Iowa become the first in the nation caucus state? This occurred after rule changes in the early 70s, and in 1972 it was the Democrats that actually moved their caucus up to be in front of the New Hampshire primary. And then in 1976, uh, the, the Republicans followed suit, and of course, because of the success of then Governor Carter when he came to Iowa to start his campaign, and ultimately he came in first among the candidates, although he did lose to uncommitted that year, that, that propelled him onto the nomination in the presidency, and ever since then, Iowa has gotten much more attention for its caucuses than they did in those first couple of uh, rounds.